What is Deliciously Dope? It's a show about the journey into the world of culinary cannabis, showcasing the silent stories behind cannabis and cooking. See, the two walk hand in hand like meat and salt. So my show sets out to span across the world in search of finding some of the best ways to heal from this amazing plant, all while eating your favorite foods. This is Deliciously Dope, a journey into the world of culinary cannabis. And we're back with another edition of Daily Chronicles. What's up? I'm the host with the most, Chef Rodney. How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? There's a lot going on in Michigan lately, a lot going on with caregivers' rights. And so it's, it's insane, but someone's got to talk about it, right? But the topic at hand, guys, is cannabis, okay? I mean, you know, we, we do the meaningful conversations. We do all of the the interesting topics and educational topics and just all of the cannabis topics related y'all you know everyone knows me knows i like cooking writing and smoking quite a bit you know and so it falling into the one of the you know the few passions in my life i have to you know somehow find a way to quench this insatiable thirst for knowledge you know and that's why we sit down and we do the five dubs here at the daily chronicles you know the who what when where and why of who these key lights in the industry are Today, I got the, the pleasure of chopping it up with Jamie Lowell. More about that when we come back, y'all. This is the Daily Chronicles coming at your faces. back welcome back to the yet another daily chronicles today my guest is the one the only co-founder of the macc that's the michigan association of compassion centers the first industry association in the state that, that, that holy shit so this dude absolutely knows what he's talking about when we want to sit down and chop it up with him if that weren't enough <laughs> if that weren't enough he has he is the co-host of a cannabis themed internet show called Jazz Cabbage Cafe. Amazing show. Go check it out. I'm always watching their stuff, but it, it, it's it's insane. You know what? I'm gonna let him tell you if he wants to know. Here he is, Jamie. Jamie Lau, man, how you doing? 
Hey, Hello, thanks for very on good. The show today, man. Oh man, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. So, let's talk caregivers' rights. Okay. What the hell is going on? Well, um, really, ever since the passage of the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act, I mean, which was in uh, November of 2008. Uh, it has started. I mean, uh, in 2009, I believe there was a uh, introduction of a bill by a senator named Kuypers, mm -hmm. and that would have eliminated the caregiver system in lieu of like 10 large grows, distributors. And, uh, you know, that's kind of where it began. And we've been fighting against this in many different ways ever since with different groups of people sometimes. Um, most recently, there are a couple different attacks on, on the caregiver system. But most recently, um, there's a, an organization called the Michigan Cannabis Manufacturers Association. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are made up of some of the larger investors in the state in this new industry. And uh, their lobbyist, Steve Linder, who we've dealt with and with different groups in the past, um, is essentially saying that the caregiver system is flawed, that it's a, uh, it's a competing market that isn't as safe and whatever criticism he has there's an article that people can 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 read uh, from what i'm referring to in fact the article is entitled advocate for michigan's biggest cannabis companies explains why he's unhappy with caregivers and uh, uh he makes it quite clear that uh, uh they want everything in the regulated market mm -hmm. uh, and they, they don't mind altering the laws the people's law in order to achieve that and for those of us who've been at this for quite a long time, that's a non-starter. We're not peeling back any rights. We'll move forward. Mm -hmm. We'll do something that's progressive. There's a bill out there right now that would allow for pediatric patients to be able to use their medicine on school grounds. We support that. Uh, we need to, if we're gonna open up these laws, we need to take some, some time out and fix some of the dysfunctional interpretations that have taken place over the years when people such as Bill Schuette were in power as attorney general and many of the judges and other prosecutors who just never really took this seriously and, and were obstructionists uh, and right. disallowed proper implementation. Uh, so uh, the, the newest reincarnation of this is this group. We've been hearing for a little while before this uh, article came out with Steve Linder that uh, they've been shopping language to uh, lawmakers that would uh, effectively reduce the amount of plans or limit rights or take away rights that already exist. Again, that such talk is a non-starter. If we're going to open up the acts, we're moving forward, or we're fixing previous problems. We're not taking away rights, and that's why there's been such a backlash to that type. Of, they think it's like all like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, we should just do this now. Caregivers, you know, did their job for a while, and now uh, this commercial system is now in place, so we don't really need them as much anymore. Uh, you know, the reality is they believe, and, and and it's kind of an exposure of ignorance because it's not true, but they believe that if they somehow do something to hurt this caregiver system or activity that's outside of the commercial system, that that will gain market share for them. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, when they say this stuff, it's kind of an exposure of ignorance and their you know, evil kind of tendencies to not give a shit about others in this whole um, bigger picture of things and uh, just to accommodate themselves and work to benefit themselves. And most people don't like that. In fact, you know, just to that, that approach of like just having a few different distributors has been tried not just in Michigan, but all over the place. The voters of Ohio a couple of years ago were faced with that question. They want legalization badly in Ohio, but they said no to that particular structure and that system uh, because it's stupid and and uh, too limiting and the people are past that. We can do better sooner. So um, that is happening. And if somebody, a senator or a representative, actually decides to get behind and introduce that bill, I kind of feel sorry for him or, him or her. Right. But, but that is being worked on. And, 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 and I brought up that pediatric bill. The yep. problem is that pediatric bill needs to open up the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act. So do these people in order to limit caregiver rights. So the plan here, or it's on a course, whether or not it was a specific plan or not, right. it's on a course to be a negotiation and we've got to stop that. There is no yep. negotiation. We don't peel back rights. Yeah, that's just it. Like, listen, you sound like the perfect person before we get into the five dubs because I can't wait to get into the dubs. I okay. want to hear what happened. You're the kind of person, it being a very sensitive topic and a topic that needs discussion, I feel that you're, again, you're the type of person where 
you are informed enough for me to kind of tell you what I think, and, and you can correct me where I'm wrong, right? Sure. So, in Michigan, you are allowed to grow 12 plants just as an adult, correct? Yes, 21 and over in your residence. That's the max for the house, but okay, yes. Right, right, right. So now, what if you're a caregiver? How do you know how that changes? I, I don't know anything beyond. Uh, right. I'm a medical patient first and foremost. I mean, I, I'm a chef for 25 years. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> so, so, you're, so you're asking if you could just add on the numbers if you're already like a caregiver with patients? Can you I'm add on your? To figure, what is the difference between growing from, you know, when you say you're a caregiver, what is a caregiver? That is my question. I okay, I'm sorry. It's caring for other people, but those caregivers have different. So from what I understand, it was you can have up to five patients and you're allowed so many plants per patient. So you can have that many plants. What's those numbers? Uh, if somebody is a patient themselves. Okay. And then they become a caregiver and they can do that for up to five patients. Mm -hmm. Then the max grow would be 72 plants. That's what I, okay. That's what I thought. So they're really... There really, in my mind, isn't an incentive to grow for anybody if I'm already a patient and uh, I, I can grow more, you know, my own medicine at home. That's where I'm at with it. So that's where you're going to see my, my view is a little askew because I really, real talk, real talk, it, it affects me, yes, but it don't really affect me. If that, if sure. I, if, you know what I mean? But at the same time, at the same time, let's go back before. I started growing my own medicine. Let's go back before I started doing any of this, where I was just working in kitchens. What it means to people, and correct me if I'm wrong, to the general Joe Schmo, if you will, or, you know, Susan, in Michigan, if you go to a dispensary, there, it's going to be a higher cost. They're basically telling you, either you can't grow it anymore, even though that's what we fought for, you can't grow it anymore, we can, and you have to buy it from us how is that not a monopolization that's what i well, want to know. well it, you, know, <laughs> you know because the because the because the commercial industry would still be these it, you know unless these people get their way now right now they're after individual rights that right. doesn't mean they're not after companies smaller than them correct you know so yeah. uh they're angling for that kind of and i think that that's been no secret and um that's been the plan, as I mentioned before, ever since the passage of the law here mm -hmm. in the state by different people who believe that they have enough power and influence to achieve these things through policy and influencing legislature and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that way, they are trying to kind of control the market. To, to many of us who have worked on this, even some of us who are involved in the industry, as I am, uh, legalization isn't real until a few other things happen. And the MRTMA was just the beginning, not the, not the total answer. And, and so without being able to grow for yourself, without being able to get cannabis from somebody else, mm -hmm. um, then it's not really legalization just if you're left with a commercial market. So, Correct. Um, and not only do we have the limitations that we have now, but any move from, from my perspective is to make that more broad and to open things up more, not to restrict things more. So these guys would want to not only restrict limits or take away rights, they'd also want to encourage more police activity to crack down on stuff outside of the commercial hmm. um, world. And there are some times and places where people do stuff that are clearly you know, outside of laws or, or policies or things like that. And that might need, be, might need to be addressed possibly, yeah. but that could be done civilly. You don't need yeah. uh, you know, cops, you don't need uh, paramilitary invasions yeah. and homes and businesses and arrests and seizures property and stuff like that right take care it's just pot it's just exactly. cannabis that's, that's part of the uh message you know exactly. we can take care of that civilly just like we do lots of things uh, you know listen i don't know anybody that's ever smoked a joint and beat somebody up but i know a lot of cops that got mad real quick and then uh, pulled some triggers that's all i'm gonna say okay i don't like certain law enforcement types that's the type is the specific uh, pronoun that I want you to walk away from there. Uh, it doesn't There's matter. There's certain personalities that are kind of drawn to that or, or recruited and yeah. then are, you know, utilized for these revenue generating things, not, not justice mm -hmm. inducing, not protecting the community, you know, activity, but mighty dollar. yeah, revenue, revenue uh, producing activity. And a lot of them didn't necessarily believe that they were signing up for that stuff and then found themselves in it. The rank and file, uh, generally pretty cool police officers has, has been my experience but a lot of the decision makers a lot of the policy and stuff like that has not been very cool at all no. No. 
I can imagine that, man, you know, and caregivers' rights seem to be always under attack. And so I heard from, I don't remember who, man. I, I get cannabis information from a lot of different people. I'm in a lot, lot going of on. I got a yep. lot going on, a lot of different friends, man. We hear it all the time, you know. And, and so someone made mention that it really doesn't matter because you've got the federal government already working on making it legal anyways so even if it does happen it's only going to be for a small window or whatever have you so some people were saying well in hindsight it might be good and vice versa what do you think about that what what how would it alter that so let's say the federal government's like screw it we got it all in place it's legal now and so would those people still have a leg to stand on like what would what does that you know do the two have anything to do with each other yeah well it, it that's an interesting conversation and which way it ultimately goes is you know uh, left to be seen and there are many efforts going on right now and, and of course we kind of thought that our new president and vice president would be a little mm -hmm. bit cooler a little That's bit sooner we you know That's on this we issue so that there's an obstacle there although the the lawmakers work the federal lawmakers working on this will claim Cory Booker Blumenauer Sch Schumer etc say that if they can get something rational together that, that, that they can get Joe Biden and company to go with it okay that said devil is in the detail so are, is the federal government going to try to come up with their own system um you know are they just simply going to deschedule and and leave it up to each state to get started with and then take it from there and an organization that i'm with michigan asa has a national yep. component and they have been working for a long time on the deschedule issue they've sued the government they've taken it deeply into court they've gotten a lot of great things on record and they've also have a uh, alternative for DEA and other organizations handling the issue, create a right. different department that's reasonable and understands it. It's more along the lines of herbal medicine, herbal pharmacology, right. and, and then they kind of handle those things. And I would like to see that put in place, but many different twists and turns can happen. And you know, the influence of big money interests there, you know, people that were in Senate and, and lawmakers not too long ago who are, who, who, definitely were not interested in supporting these rights are now with big companies making money off of it. So, uh, you know, it's kind of ironic. It's the, it's the dollar signs in the eyes of some of the big players that helped to get us moving a little bit. And now we're fighting against them getting more share, but, uh, that's just, that's how this, that's part of the history. That's just how this has been, how this has been working and how our system works. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate. And here at the thing, you know, all these companies are going to be hurt all of these people that have jobs for your company whether they agree with you or not okay they're going to be hurt and that's the issue uh there's a couple companies on that that there is a there's a an internet couple of internet billboards going around saying boycott absolutely share it i'm cool with that it's not an issue i'm not cool with the, the whole reason but the, the the ability to boycott itself i'm good with that and i think that you should do that absolutely we like to encourage those those places yeah. to leave that organization exactly. and to denounce that thing. It's okay that you're, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Not for everybody. It's okay right. that you're a big company with a lot of money. Yeah. You don't have to be an asshole, you know. Exactly. And, and taking away other people's rights because you think it's going to benefit you is being an asshole. Exactly. There's no question about that. So, with that being said, one of the last things that I kind of want to talk about, you know, because that's not why we had the show, you know, but that is we did have to discuss it, but. Um, I dude, it broke my heart because there's a couple of companies that I heard really great things on there. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm with you. I, I love it, get it, you know. And and then I see this, and I'm like, what happened? You know. Hey, so as a consumer, I'm like, fuck. Hey, those companies create know? jobs. They help out yeah. with uh, the expungement process. Yeah. They help out with social equity issues. They're not useless or not productive at all. But that's they do good shit. Yeah, but that doesn't resolve the issue of trying no. to take away people's exactly. rights and to benefit themselves. So exactly, we hope you we know, encourage them to continue doing the other things. We just got to stop I get it. doing this. Hey, uh, do you dab at all? I do when in Rome. Yeah. You know, I don't like set it up myself that often, but if I'm around people doing it, I like to get the extra kick in the head. Well, I want to get you some of this. Uh, it's by Noble Road. Right on. I'm, I'm making some content for them. They they sponsor the show, and it's a uh, Golden Glue Live Hash Rosin. Sounds awesome. You can, yeah, you can actually start to get this in stores now. I know Empire Collective has it, um, and a few other places are starting to pick it up. Our edible line is out there as well. But, dude, I'd love to get you some, get your, you know, feedback on it. Like sure. What you think? I think that I think the Golden Blue is one of my favorite. There's also like a Russian Snow, which is interesting, and then there's uh, I think it was uh, Glucifer, which tastes like the devil himself, but it's cool. Sticky <laughs> devil. Oh, exactly, exactly. Speaking of Noble Road, here's a quick little ditty.
I was baked as shit when I made that commercial. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, eh. I, I liked the little, the little green butterfly. But no, we're back. That's why I was so creative. Oh, thank you. It's, it's, it's interesting what, uh, what you can do when you smoke weed and put your mind to it. You know, so that being said, make sure, you know, you're putting your mind to shit. Make sure you guys stick around for the 30 second philosophy at the end of the uh, episode. I love, love, love this book. The more that I'm able to share that with you guys. Um, I'm not throwing it down your throat. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. If you do, hey, let's fucking use our muscles, right? The biggest one in your head. Speaking of the biggest one, I want to talk about the first dub. We got five dubs, man. Who, what, when, where, and why? of your first time smoking cannabis. So, Jamie, if you're ready, we'll get right into it. Okay. All right, man, all right. First time dubs, Jamie, who, what, when, where, and why, who was the first person you smoked weed with? I believe it was uh, with one of my sister's boyfriends, and I was very young. Okay, okay. Like eight or nine years old. Oh, and, damn, uh, that's early my sisters, shit. A couple of my sisters, eight and seven years older than me, so a little bit more up in the age where that activity huh. might be taking place, and just uh, pass it to me. Well, and, there uh, you go. There you I go. hit it. I just there hit it. Go. I, I got to watch them use cannabis quite a bit and see the difference in behaviors and all that kind of stuff from a young age, too, aside from hitting it myself a few times along the way. There you go. That's, that's no better way, really. First time W is who, what, when, where, and why. What was the first thing you smoked? Was it a bong, joint, dab, spliff, or the proverbial pop can? Well, this was in the 70s. <laughs> uh, it was a joint. It was probably some shitty brown pot in a very weirdly rolled small joint, but that's what it was. Small joint or not, small joint or not, it still works. It gets the job done. That actually leads us to our next question, who, what, when, where, and why. When was your first time smoking a left-handed cigarette? Is that a different question than the first question? I apologize. Oh, yeah, it is. It's just, so the first question, you know, when was your first time just smoking, you know, what, what was it? And then the first time, like, when was it when you first smoked a joint, left-handed cigarette? Here being a euphemism for a joint. Oh, okay. Well, that first time I used was a joint, actually. Yeah. Yep. And That's that is... Kind of leads that, us into the same question. Right, okay, yeah. So, but, yeah, uh, right. you know, that and that became my, from a lifetime till now, my oh. preferred method of smoking. I've done so some, some glass bowls and bongs along the way, and uh, I will I will do every single conceivable. I have yet to use a suppository, but I'm not against mm -hmm. that. It's a, it's a, a great way to get high. Uh, what do you think about us? Uh, so speaking about, you know, great ways of getting high, what do you think about this THC powder that you can snort now? I think that they should have, I don't have any really reason or, or desire to do it that way, but it's not necessarily unreasonable. It's a similar concept that you're just bringing it through the small blood vessels in there just as if you're doing suppository, as if you were doing a, uh, you know, a sublingual tincture application or something like that. I think they should have like called it what it is, like a snuff, like, like marketed it like a snuff, mm -hmm. like tobacco does kind of, mm -hmm. instead of like trying to use a, a parallel with cocaine. I mean... Uh, that was probably a misfire in marketing on their part, but it's not necessarily a bad product. I, I don't know if I have any use for it, but I mean, it's just isolate. That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. really what it is. Uh, people were asking me, they're like, "What is it? It's just isolate." Yeah. Is it cocaine? No. And you get a little immediate rush from it because it gets into your blood system yeah. fast. It does not go through your digestive system. You don't get much more out of it after that. It's probably yeah, it's, pretty cool, actually. I mean, it's kind of like why I like tinctures and stuff. And uh, but. Uh, you know, they, they misfired on how they presented it. I they absolutely did. Uh, they should have went, you know, more medical instead of, you know, I don't know, Scarface. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just, it is what it is. But first time W's, who, what, when, where, and why? Where were you when you first smoked the electric lettuce? Like, kind of set the scene. Like, where were you at? Like, <laughs> uh, Okay. I, I, I remember at least one time, whether or not it was the first time, I don't know. But uh uh, I was, we were driving back. My parents got divorced when I was like five and split time a little bit. And my sister and one of her boyfriends came to pick me up from my father's house to drive back home. And uh, on that trip, the joint was lit and passed to me in the back seat, and and I hit it. That's kind of the first memory I have of really participating, having it passed to me, and all that kind of stuff. You know, so. So let's get in the mind of young Jamie in the back seat of his car on the way to your mom's house from your dad's house. Yeah. Who, what, when, where, and why, at the end of the day, period, at the end of the sentence, when you were handed that joint, why did you smoke it? 
you know, interesting question. I was like nine, so I'm sure I didn't consider too much. And if somebody older and looks like they're having fun, you know, like hands me the joint, I'm probably not going to refute it with any kind of reason, you know. So right. I took it and hit it. I've been seeing it, the activity, the behavior for a long time by then. And I was not turned off or scared. Or I mean, I was scared a little bit more about alcohol. Huh? I mean, I'd seen that behavior too. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, it's it's funny because I always grew up, you know, my mom was a chef. You know, there was a drink. There was everything. There, I, I've seen it all. Um, <clears throat> at, at certain times, you, you're like, well, why can't I have that sugar, though? Because that's the sugar that I put on pancakes. What's that? And it's just this thing of cocaine sitting there. And they're like, don't worry about it. I'm like, right. But now I really want it. You know what I mean? So it's and then you had the war on drugs and that whole campaign, you know, dare in that whole campaign. So I'm not going to say we had it hard, but we kind of had it hard. You know what I mean? That's the thing. There are people today who are adults that never didn't know cannabis exactly. as being somewhat accepted on some level or legal on some level in Michigan. I have some people yeah. going, OK, so cannabis is great, right? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, great. What about marijuana? And then I'm like, it's the same thing. They're like, no, it's not. A marijuana is illegal. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's you want to just go, shut up. And well, there's so know, much misinformation out there. Exactly. And, and so many people who are on our side believe a lot of this misinformation, too. Yeah. That's still part of the struggle. Yeah. I, here's the thing. Okay, so if I, let's, real quick. If I've known somebody for 20 years and I give you information, clearly I'm not going to bullshit about it. You know, you've known me for 20 years. It is what it is. Okay, cool. Fine. If I give you information and I've known you for 20 years and you just meet somebody randomly standing in line conversating at a gas station and they tell you the same exact information and you believe them, I'm going to be a little pissed. It's because it's like, dude, you know, it, what the fuck, man? Am I wasting my breath? And then if you find out that that person got their information from watching my show, hey, thanks. I'm going to be like, the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So it's just like... Google it, people. <laughs> if you don't believe well, it. All information. When somebody imparts something, there's some source there. And really mm -hmm. figuring out what that is, people will tell you all the time, oh, you must listen to Fox, or you must listen to CNN, or you must do this or that. It doesn't matter. They're going to present it with maybe with different yep. bends on it, but there's, a, there's <laughs> an underlying source of that information. Look for that, and then, yeah. and then view it for yourself to determine you know what's going on. I mean, I'm all about the whole loose lips sink ships. That's that, that's very true. It's been it's running true all of my life. But at the same time, there's always a little bit of a truth to a lie. Okay, if you remember that as a recovering narcissist, if you remember that and learn from that, you're then able to go, oh shit, that person's lying. Oh shit, that person's lying. Oh shit, there's no way that can be true. And then we stumble upon the whole caregiver's rights and what's going on now. Going, I'm looking at this page of boycotts going, there's no way that, the, oh shit, what the hell? You know, it's always, always, always fact check. I'm not going to deny that. But at the same time, if I've known you, please understand that the reason that Mr. Lau here has, you know, the, the podcast and does it, we know what we're talking about. We research this because you've got to prove it to us first. That's what it really comes down to. If we're not convinced, we're probably not going to work about it. Um, well, that reminds right. So, me so we're, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but we're just saying yeah. this stuff. But if you'd like to, you can see editorials from members of the Michigan mm -hmm. Cannabis Association. You can see the, the, the article I referenced earlier with Steve Linder mm -hmm. and, and you can, see what's going to happen in the legislature pretty soon or talk to people there and understand that they are actively trying to shop uh, language to uh, you know effectuate these these changes so that's another example of go to these sources and check that out for yourself and and, and understand that this the information that we're giving about this topic is, is based on real things real concerns exactly and if you don't believe that well your pocketbook's going to believe us later when all the prices go up and you can't do shit about it that's really that's really where it's at but uh, after these messages, we're going to come back with the next level of the five dubs, the favorite W's.
back to the next level of the dubs, y'all. Hey, check this out. This is pretty cool. Make sure you guys go check out the Jazz Cabbage Cafe. Mm -hmm. I always try and, like, when I see you guys pop up live, I always try and share it, you know, to my different pages. I like, appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Plus, Rick's mad, ain't he? <laughs> Rick's like, let's go. Let's debate this thing. I love it, man. I, he gets fired up, don't he? He's righteous. And uh, <laughs> yes. I would say 90 plus percent of the time I agree with him. And we work well together on uh, effectuating change on issues that, that need that type of attention. We're really, this, this this community should be pretty happy to have Rick Thompson involved. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And yourself as well. well. That's what I'm saying. You guys have won awards with your Jazz Cabbage Cafe. You know what I'm saying? In, in the very short time that you've done it. I say short time, but you've been around for a few years. Yeah. You know, you guys have won numerous awards. You know, you're right up there with uh, um, with Ryan's, uh, what, Smoke and Rope. Smoke and Rope. Yeah. And then you got the, the My Cannon Cast, and you got the Daily Chronicles here. And then there's, I know there's Medical Mondays. Dude, there's, there's so much programming with Canadian with with Canadian culture, a because it's right there. We're basically neighbors, anyways. It's over yeah. a bridge, right? And then you've got you know Michigan culture as well. There's so much cannabis content that I just cannot wait. To Great shows right in Michigan. Yep. Exactly. No exactly. question. Yep. You know, and and in sitting down and being able to listen, and then you got the Brain Jerk Entertainment guys with their 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 morning show, the Wake and Bake stuff. That's just mm -hmm. it's, it's insane. I absolutely find uh, Michigan Bro Grows show is a good one. Planet um, Green Trees has been around for as long or longer than anybody. Oh, absolutely. Post attorney Maybe Michael Camorn. Uh, 420, post 420 or something like that? 420 post, and Rick's on that too. It's kind of business uh, oriented, yeah. With Mike Brennan, a former Detroit Free Press uh, reporter. Yep. I mean, but at the same time, like, this is all good content. And the best part is, it's for really all walks of life. And that's why all flavors matter here. You know what I mean? And, yeah, we all have cannabis. And, yeah, we might disagree and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, we're trying to eradicate a stigma and entertain people. And trust me, you think that there's, oh, there's a lot to choose from. There's going to be even more. Okay? This is the, these are the people that, that, that saw it coming from a, a while. You know, and so we, we're, we're the pioneers. I don't brag about much in my life. But we're pioneers right now. This is just this is just getting started. It hasn't even officially started yet. You know what I mean? And we're already having these issues. That's why we're already doing what we do. So we can kind of get it all smoothed out, technical difficulties and such, and bring it better for you guys. Speaking of bringing it better, that leads us to our second dub of the day. Favorite W's. Jamie, who was your favorite person to smoke weed with? Wow. Well, I mean, that depends on times and situations in my life, I guess. If you're, if I have to come up with the ultimate. You could probably just name one. Usually, see, the reason I did that is because, like, if you were to ask me that, I, like, automatically have to say my girlfriend. Otherwise, I'm an asshole. Well, I mean, I immediately was starting to think about my brothers and some of my better friends, uh, you know, and things like that. Rick and Ryan, who we've mentioned already, uh, you know, on this show. I always love, love those uh, occasions. Uh, the discussion, the we're on the same page with so many things. We get deep into some stuff. You know, I, you I like say that. You I like say those exercises. Smoke. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've also enjoyed hanging out and uh, smoking with people uh, you know, who are somewhat well known, but who are also pretty grounded. You know, and it's an interesting time to to get to learn about that. You know, when you see somebody on TV or social media and things like that all the time. And yeah. start gathering some kind of image of how they are based on that. You know, you don't really know until you have a chance to, you know, have some discussions and sit down. And I've, I've appreciated doing that with Darren McCarty and others yeah. who have really been really, you know, people that have a lot of draw and mm -hmm. reach and that are Austin George, are, are really good Jesus. participants. Boston George has some good times with him. I, uh, some some friends and former, you know, partners are a little closer and worked with him a lot more and stuff like that. But I had my times too, and, mm -hmm. and um, that was a very very interesting. A uh, couple of conversations for sure. I mean, look at that guy's life, man. You know exactly. You know, uh, John Sinclair. Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 John Sinclair is a is a is a treat every time too. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's varied, man. I you know I enjoy smoking pot. And I enjoy smoking pot with interesting people who I connect with, and uh, you know it's a good thing. It brings us a lot of us together. You know, if anybody would have told me, you know two years ago, hey, your career is going to become this and you're going to smoke weed for a living. I'd have been like, yo, hang on. Can I get what you're smoking? Because that shit sounds fire. Because like, there's no way that that's true. I've got to be to work in six hours. Like, and I haven't even punched out of this place. You know what I mean? So I probably wouldn't have believed you. But then once COVID was just like, 
nope. And then dining became illegal overnight. What's a chef to do? You know? And so then I was like, what the fuck am I going to do? And as I'm smoking a joint, I'm just like, shut up. And then it all made sense to me. You know, I had to, to, to focus my creative outlets, if you will, somewhere else instead of, you know, slaving away in, in certain kitchens for certain people, X, Y, and Z. We won't even talk about the wage shortage, but it's an issue. <laughs> What's not an issue is the favorite doves. Who, what, when, where, and why? What is your favorite way to consume cannabis? You said you were a joint person with some stuff along the way? Smoke big fat joints. Oh, I love it. I'm, a, I'm actually hand rolling a joint right now. I'll let you nice. say what I'm done. I will use cannabis in every conceivable way, but ultimately, I, you know, I even tried using, you know, like one, nice one hitters and chillums and things like that uh, in an attempt to conserve and I don't know, whatever else to be clean. Uh, not use the paper, not have the roaches left over, that type of stuff. But I invariably, no matter what, go back to smoking big fat joints. Probably wasting half of it to the air, but that's just how I just really enjoy doing it. That's that's your that's your jam, man. Ain't nobody. If anybody has a problem with that, then like, come on, man. You know what I mean? Like, come on. I mean, I usually so the way that I roll joints. If you just watched, um, I roll my cones, man. You know, fat little joints, fat little cones, and uh, I like to roll them so I can. Fill them, pack them, tap them, and go. So you just—you basically, it's like a cone, but you don't end up with the little uh, filter thing at the end. Oh, I put the filter in it already. Oh, you did already. Okay, so yeah, you, you so basically roll your own cone. Okay. Exactly. Nice. You know, I find that that's like the perfect amount because everybody's done that two pile technique. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Pile, pile. That's exactly. still, I'm still there, man. <laughs> it's an OG technique, dog. That's yeah. what it is. You got two but I'll, but I'll take two those piles. pre roll cones though and, and use those sometimes because it's pretty simple to fill up and pack down and they burn nice. And uh, I will say so. this, and I want to say this now, and I'm sure that we can both appreciate this, and then we'll go back into the favorite dubs while I'm rolling this. Being a joint smoker, a pre roll is an, important to me because it shows what kind of cannabis a dispensary has. It's a convenience thing for me. Yo, I already grow my own my own medicine. Right here it is. I got some some very sexy Death Star, okay? Cool. I love Death Star, man. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. The pepper notes alone are worth it. I like mixing Death Star with wedding cake. That's it's like it, it's I love it. Haven't Plus done the, that. the two highs work well for my body and for what go. I'm trying to yeah. heal. I've done it with the Canatonic number four before. Uh, Ooh, and then people have turned, well, it's great. And then it yeah. turned into its own strain. People just uh, bred them together and called it star tonic, which is also oh, a good strain, but prefer taking the two and mixing them together personally. But So I was saying with pre-rolls, it's a convenience thing. So if I'm shopping sure. in there and I only want to buy one pre-roll, don't tell me, huh, this is the cheapest sale I've had all day. Well, you just lost my business because it's like a gas station. I'm there if, to get gas really or to take a piss or something convenient to me. When I walk through, I was like, oh, maybe I do want a candy bar. Bro, I'm looking at everything in the suspensory. I already got that shit at home. I just don't got it on me. You know what I'm saying? So you bring yeah. up a good point, yeah. Yeah, so it's just like suggestive selling. Now, I can tell you, hang on, hang on. I can tell you that the pre-rolls at some dispensaries, like our boy Ryan, that game is sick. They're some of the best damn pre-rolls I've had on the market. You know what I'm saying? That's my point. So I want you to take a look back as a consumer instead of quantity, look at quality, please. That's all I'm going to ask. You know, right I'm, sure, I'm sure you can probably appreciate that. You know what I yeah, mean? The, the, so I'm with a, a retail store called Botanical Company. And it's oh, part, of a vert yeah, part of a vertically Franklin integrated Fields. company. And Franklin Fields has been putting out some uh, good medicine. Just started. Turn of the year, first harvest, about... I don't know how many harvests in now, but it's happening perpetually, and it just seems to be getting better and more uh, uh, expressive. Like yeah. as each harvest comes down, they dial it in, and uh, they were put out in these Sensi bags, promotional Sensi bags, with Jamie yeah. Cooper and her magazine, and they got really good, really great response. Oh, dude, trust me, I got one of those bags. <laughs> Jamie's like, "Hey, I got you, fam. Go pick it up." Cool. And uh, I won't tell you where I picked it up because the place where I picked it up was one of those places on that list and I'm not <laughs> going back. The point is, um, I went into Botanical Co. Ryan told me, go in, hey, go pick this up. He let me know that there was a sale going on with the redemption. I went and picked up some kitchen sink. I smoked it. He's like, cool, cool. You know, that was it. Um, I do like the vibe when you walk in. I love that guy. You know, I love that you can look at the plants, uh, the real-time cameras. Love that. 
I love the staff is very knowledgeable, very friendly. It's 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 I like how it's laid out. And this is by no means selling anything, by the way. This is me just telling you what I think as a consumer. And uh, I pr- it, the, got some free banging stickers in there. Y'all went on the grow fridge. Anybody on that grow fridge, it's a VIP. You got to be an important cannabis people to be on that grow fridge. Otherwise, nah. And I've already told the old lady that when we move, it's going with us. Or I'm not going. That's what I told <laughs> She's buying a bigger house without me. But anyways, no. Um, back to the favorite W's. Who, what, when, where, and why. When, Jamie, do you enjoy smoking cannabis? Well, I'm sure I'm not the first guest to say this, but the, the question better is, you know, what are times when I would not be smoking cannabis? I suppose uh, most of the show I haven't been. I, you know, I just uh, I, I just closed up the room, put the air conditioner on to be more comfortable, and uh, you know, I smoked Listen, quite a bit leading up to the show. I was about to say, if you're more comfortable blazing up, blaze up. I, I, I am not uncomfortable. I do that probably at times <laughs> that are very inappropriate, on whether it be a meeting or a broadcast like this or my own broadcast. We, In fact, I think it's necessary to get through it. Yes. But, uh, yes. It takes some of the anxiety out. But I, I smoke a lot at different times. I mean, there are some days I wake up and I, for whatever reason, I don't get to it until later on in the day. Some days it's right off the bat. I think it's just kind of how Speaking of... Speaking of different ways, you're going to a dinner tonight. You want to yes. talk a little bit more about that while I get this late? Sure. This is the second one I'm going to. Uh, the organization I know is called Real Life Shit. And Real Life Shit. And uh, uh, it's just a really cool concept. So the first time around, anyway, there was dinner, long table, people talking, and representatives from like many different facets. A representative of one of these companies that we're boycotting was there, and he's a very cool dude, too. Uh, and people that are still doing a lot of legacy slash gray market type activity were there. People such as myself, Ryan was at the first one. Mm-hmm. And it was just a great conversation from all these different perspectives. And it's the reality of how cannabis plays out, not how a CEO somewhere wishes it were playing out or assumed it would or whatever, you know, like people who actually have been around and seen the history and have been a part of it and, and know what's happening and what's unfolding. And uh, I thought it was a great conversation. And then, uh, uh, they asked me to come back, and, and um, I'm going to. And tonight I'm going to be kind of like, you know, one of the featured people along with some other great speakers yeah. to, yeah. Uh, to like, talk about some of the stuff. And I imagine this exact issue, since it's so prevalent, will come up. I actually brought it up last time before any of this stuff happened because this has been on our radar. Uh, for you know about it. You know about it. You're like, yo, what if, what if they're going to pull this bullshit? Oh, look at you go. I will tell you this. I will tell you this. I think you can, you and I can both agree. Once you become predictable, you become beatable. All right. I get you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not, they're not doing anything we haven't predicted already. You feel me? I hear you. And so we do this all over like this gourmet cook meal that's infused. I guess, you know, you choose if you want things infused or not or whatever, but uh, just, just well done. Great chef. Uh, I, I don't know if it's the same person again this time around. I, I, I really don't know, but a couple that is from Detroit originally went out to California, did some really good stuff, really good ancillary business type stuff. Um, it's now back in Detroit trying to get into this group here, figuring out how best to do it, you know, and they're, they're, they're opening up these conversations to, to hear what's going on, where the opportunities are, help people make connections with each other. Yep. It's very yep. cool. I fucking love that, man. I fucking love that. And hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll be at you with a couple of these here soon. You know, I'm, sure. I'm very, very, very new to the industry, but I haven't pissed anybody off yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're doing something good. We're doing something good. But favorite W's, who, what, when, where, and why, where? Everyone knows a place is your favorite place to smoke weed. This is slightly incriminating, and if I'm being overheard sometime uh you know it's not gonna fare well for me later but i i well i like it most times as, as we just discussed but uh while traveling you know it's uh it's a particularly you know, favorite time uh that doesn't necessarily put you behind the driver's wheel if you know what i'm saying no but i do that no question about it well i was but, trying um, not to incriminate you but I mean, you can just jump right into it That's i met more with my wife than i don't worry about it i don't worry about oh, anybody else <laughs> At the end of the day, that's the one you got to answer to. Right. <laughs> it don't matter what anybody else thinks. Fuck them. 
she starts yelling at you, it's a whole different level. Well, and that's part of when we say that even people who are on our side don't really understand everything. The driving thing is automatically assumed to be similar like alcohol in a lot of people's minds. And they're like, yeah, you just you know, shouldn't smoke and drive. The reality is for some of us, it's actually a better, more safer experience by being comfortable, depending on what the condition is, by having more focus on the actual uh, driving at hand and then being distracted by many other things. So there are reasons that I do it. And uh, I don't I will, I will apologize for it. To that. Exactly. I will add on to that so that we can kind of move to, away from it a little bit. I've noticed that, though. So obviously I'm a cannabis patient. Obviously I, I consume clearly, blah, blah, blah. I've noticed that when I consume cannabis, I can pay attention to more shit than people around me. I'm just like, that's cool, but then three, two, one, that's going to fall. And they're like, how the hell? I'm like, dude, I just, what do you want? Matrix shit. What, what do you want from me? And, you know, I, I just, but at the same time, it, I do feel that way sometimes. It's like, are you even fucking paying attention to what you're doing? Because some people, man, how did you get your driver's license? A. B. How are you, what is going through your head? Like, how are you even alive right now? Like, Very good chance you might be saying that about me if you drove around with me for a while. I think others do, but uh, somehow. Well, continue hopefully. to make it from point A to point B. <laughs> Listen, and that's fine. I, I, I am this more at people of like that just they'll do something stupid and not think about it. There's like, oh, well, yeah, that, that sucks. And then they'll, they'll, they'll know it's wrong and just keep riding with it because they don't want to admit. That's what I'm saying. Right and it's more of like those people. It's just like, dude, just smoke weed and just, I don't know, eat crow, I guess. But it's not about eating crow, it's about the favorite W's and to tie this up in a neat little bow real quick for the fave dub so we can move on to the next one. Sure. Why do you smoke weed? Man, that is interesting too because, uh, you know, there's been many times in my life when it has been quite consequential to be caught with pot or sus even suspected of smoking pot, mm -hmm. depending on the circumstances. And I've always done it anyway. <laughs> um, so there's a connection Fine until the end there's a relationship there that I recognized and internalized as being okay no matter what anybody else thinks or feels about it and I've known that forever and the more I've learned about it the more that that's been confirmed and the more I was motivated to like correct this completely illogical approach to cannabis that keeps it prohibited and then we learned you know why it stays prohibited it benefits other people in other ways so that's and why. some people think that they they can take that away from some people and say you yeah. can't do that. We're not we're not about that. Yeah. We're not about that. You know what I'm saying? That's why we're having this conversation. That's why we're. So I, I, I get something out of it that's pretty profound. I, what, you know exactly how to describe that? I don't know, but I have a relationship with it, and uh, I'm not going to not utilize cannabis as I see fit for myself. Absolutely, it heals, man. That's what it is. It fucking works. And end of story. Um, real quick, I had I had a problem with alcohol years ago. Cannabis, I no longer drink. I'll have these little mixed drinks with my THC and shit, but that's a whole different story. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole different story because that's got THC in it. Ain't got no booze in it. You know, we have an endocannabinoid system. We ain't got a Jack Daniel system. But when we come back after this message, we're going to get into the nitty gritty. We're going to get into those nibbly bits. We're going to find out what happened to Mr. Lowell during his crazy dub when we get back after this message. My mouth is real over here, fam. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's a good joint, though, man. See, I mean, it's, it's fucking gone. Chief hey, I wanted to piggyback on your last statement, though. Mm -hmm. um, I personally, and I know many others who have, uh, have used cannabis to get off of other things, and that includes opiates and alcohol for me. And I know the same and more for Darren McCarty, who we mentioned earlier, and why he's such a great testimonial in addition to this community. And, I would really love to sit down and, and I, you know, it's, it's interesting because it, that name keeps being brought up. Darren McCarty, Darren McCarty, Darren McCarty. You can't not know who he is. You know, Red Wings. Although I wasn't a hockey fan, I still respected hockey. And from Detroit. I think I think just exactly. residents of Detroit are bigger hockey fans, even if they ever pay attention to it, than most of the rest of the, the country, exactly. you know. 
I hated the game last night. Uh, they're like, yeah, fucking me too. Did you see it? No, but we lost. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. But it's it's his story. I've heard the story. I, I've seen it. Yeah. You know, with him he's got a, he's got a book and stuff out too. That's yep. like it just like really exposes. He, he lets it all out, man. He, I did. I don't know what he opens himself book, up. But I've I've seen some interviews for sure. Yeah. Um, I'd love to have him on the show uh, for more than one reason, but for as, as a personal reason, it's like this is this is my my selfish takeaway from this. Um, I had a cousin. I had a cousin, uh, Chris. Chris was a huge Detroit Wet Red Wings fan. Worked in Detroit. Drove every day from Lansing at his house to Detroit. Uh, he died a few years ago. Loved weed, fam. Let me tell you. Loved weed, okay? This guy, when I was down and out and didn't have any money for anything, he'd be like, bro, I'll just give you some weed. Because he knew that I could turn, you know, I could use that. And so I did. And he knew that, okay? Right Never at, I would go to pay, wouldn't take it. Because he knew. Well, he got really, really sick. He caught cancer. And unfortunately passed away. He's no longer with us. But he was a huge fucking Darren McCarty fan. Had the right. jerseys, the whole nine. I just want the chance to be able to tell him face to face what, you know, my, yeah. my, you know, I just want to tell him that story. That's yeah, it. Man. That's it. Because I feel my cousin would want me That'd to be meaningful. That. I, I believe exactly. anyway, from just from seeing Darren in action, interacting with people a few times, um, I believe that'd be meaningful to him. It's when he engages he knows that people know about him and all that kind of stuff. And he knows that it's kind of a cool thing to like meet him and stuff. And he wants to make sure that that experience is as good as it can be. And he really connects and he cares about stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. I'm sure he'd be happy uh, to, I mean, not to hear about, you know, uh, obviously yeah. the passing yeah, yeah, of your yeah. friend, but to, but to know that there was that connection there and he was looked up to like that and it brought him some, some joy. Oh, absolutely, man. I, I, you know, I'm sure it'll, it'll happen. He's in the backyard. You know what I mean? I'm sure we'll, we'll cross paths soon. I really hope so. He's doing some good stuff. He's got a nice brand out there. Yep. It's, uh, what was it, Darren McCarty? It's Darren, Darren McCarty. McCarty brand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. i got to get my hands on one of those pre-rolls. Oh, yeah. I absolutely do. I absolutely do. Speaking of really getting our hands on shit, the crazy W's. If you're ready, this is the juiciest yeah. bit. The juiciest oh. bit of the whole thing. This is, this is when you're smoking a joint and you accidentally, quote unquote, hit that little patch of like hash or whatever little sneaky little <laughs> bastard you put in there. Absolutely. Like, oh, yeah. A little depth charge. Yeah. Exactly. I love those, man. <laughs> Crazy W's, who, what, when, where, and why. Jamie, who was with you the first time that you just got way too high? Man. We've all done it. We've all done it. We we have uh, real juicy uh, man. I don't I don't have that because the couple of times that I just ate too much, I just you know kind of passed out. But there was a time <laughs> we were working with this uh, chocolatier at, at Third Coast early on, and okay. he would make he was trying to get uh, uh, some routine, some consistency down, and that kind of stuff. He would try things out, and I would try them. And uh, for a while, he just couldn't like get me whatever i mean i i can get nailed by edibles don't right. get me wrong but it, right. it has to be the right thing the right way the right amount whatever i don't know what it, exactly that formula is for me but um i casually and kind of with a little bit too much of an ego got too <laughs> you know used to that and i kind of went for it one time and i got nailed and on a rare occasion my wife actually picked me up uh from there um that uh you know, or, or she, she was pissed, there because was she pissed she no was but but no she watched it unfold though and thought, thought it was hilarious and I, but I'm like, I had no clue for a while. It was kind of strange. I, I so much expected that I was not going to get nailed again. I didn't even, when I started feeling weird, I didn't even think about it. So I had to like go through like judging what all these symptoms mean for a while before I realized that I ate way more than I normally ever have. And that I was, that I was finally getting nailed by it. With her a couple of times, um, I really love infused honey. And we were up north before and I just had a nice, beautiful coffee with infused honey on it got a nice little buzz and she wanted some coffee and i think okay use the same yeah. cup didn't think about it gave it yeah. to her that little tiny residue at the bottom just oh no nailed her and she was done and we were you know we had to go to the same thing are you having a heart attack <laughs> you know? and it was just I'm like that dying that little bit that's it goes to show you that like some people are so incredibly sensitive a little yeah. tiny bit will send them sailing and i just like when i have overdone it it's been so much that i've really just i've just had to i just had to like go down and uh and oh. And give it you know the few hours that it needs and even wake up sometimes still feeling it you know the med head so they say or whatever so, so i got a story for you before you get to the next uh okay. to, to, the, to the what part 
I got a friend that uh, I've known him for years, known him for years, and he doesn't really dabble uh, with with uh, vices, really. You know, he's very, he believes in meditation and martial arts, and all of that is great. He doesn't really, you know, with CBD becoming legal, him a Michigan resident, you know, he can smoke weed. It's it's new, man. You know, he's got he's, he's in that position. So I was like, all right, check it out. Let's start with you with a low-dose edible. Let's see where your threshold is so I can fuck with you. That's really what it was. <laughs> I'm evil, I know. But hey, listen, if you if if you heard some of the arguments we had back when we were preteens about Pokemon cards, this is this is karma. Okay. Is you gotta start somewhere, karma. man. Exactly. Sorry. Yep. I ain't hurting him. So I gave him options. I go, listen, this one's made with RSO and it's fifty milligrams or it's hundred milligrams, eat half of it. Do not eat all of it. Okay? That's what I eat. It puts me on my ass. Don't eat all of that. Eat half of it. Okay. All right, cool. And then I was like there's some other treats here from Noble Road. Each one of them is 10 milligrams a piece. Eat one of your two of those, okay? Don't, don't eat all of these. Okay, I was like, you have options, you have choices. You're an adult, right? Oh, no, 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 no. This bastard ate half of that treat, so there's 50, and then two other ones, there's 70. He went right off into the deep end thinking he could swim. Watching him struggle for his life a little bit and then finally make it to the shallow end, he was, he was going to be fine. He wasn't going to drown to stand up, you know what I mean? But that shit was hilarious for a little bit. Because <laughs> he went through all those. It was just wave after wave. Because as soon as that RSO hit him, he went down. And he was like, I'm taking a nap. Because that's how RSO kind of works for people who aren't used to it. It's for cancer patients or people actually in fucking pain. Or you, you use know, lower amounts of it to manage yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. what it's doing, right? Exactly. And so, you know, I don't, I don't mad dose anything. You know, I, I do my math accordingly. You know what I'm saying? I do it to the point to where I know RSO is where I want to experience something, you know, like tripping on shrooms, which is also medicinal. So that's when I want to step away from reality. That's my RSO dreams. When I just want to chill vibe, man, I'll drink my, you know, my drinks. I'll, I'll put it in my coffee. I'll do the normal. I'll smoke. I'll do whatever. I'll smash some awesome, you know, Noble Road, you know, edibles. Like, I'm not just piping that. Like, dude, real talk, though, I'll get you some. They're fire. They're really, really, really good because they're hash rosin. They're full spectrum. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's phenomenal. We just changed the brownie bites to a dark chocolate. I can't stop eating them. <laughs> I'll just... These are 10. I can eat 50 of these, you know, so it's five or six for me and I'm good to be. You so know the stuff saying? tasting so good and keeping going and then like eating something and waiting, you know, 45 minutes or an hour, not feeling anything and then eating more. And then right as it kicks in, you realize that you just committed yourself to something that's, you know, beyond when what you I might get want to, to deal that with. Point, right. When <laughs> I've gotten to that point and when my friends who don't usually dabble with edibles, they'll smoke all day, dab all day. It's a whole different monster and they know it. So that's why they turn to me. They're like, how can I feel? I'm like, yo, it's going to be fine, fam. You know, but check this out. When you get to that point, you're like, yo, these ain't shit. Take 30 minutes, okay? Take 30 minutes and try and prove yourself wrong. Here's what's going to happen inside of that 30 minutes. 10 minutes inside of that 30 minutes, you're going to be like, yo, they're still not shit. 12 minutes into that, what's this thing? 15 minutes into that, uh-oh. 20 minutes into that, yeah! 30 minutes into that, yo, let's eat. That's what's going to happen, Okay. In that 30 minutes, that's the most. That's where the, the 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 crucial moment of do I consume more or do I just chill? Just chill. You don't want to listen. Yeah, you can do twice it. as much the next <laughs> day, man. And that's about part of the self titration yeah. process. You know, mm -hmm. be patient with it, and then you'll figure out what product works for you and how much and when and the, and the things that, especially if you're sensitive, kind of like my wife and others, then you have to really know that. Absolutely, which actually leads us to the next question of the crazy dubs. Who, what, when, where, and why? What pushed you over the edge? And pushed me over the edge to be involved in activism or pushed or, me over the edge? The, uh, when, you, when you got way too high when you ate the edibles with the chocolates. What was the product or what circumstances uh, kind of got me? Sorry for being too, too specific here. You're all right. You're all right. So... When you were kind of sitting there eating the chocolates and stuff and you got a little cocky and you ate a little too much, sure. that's that's kind of what pushed you over the edge. You know what I'm saying? Oh, totally. Of, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, man. I mean, I had had a few rounds uh, where, you know, the expectation was I was going to get, you know, like kicked on my ass and all that kind of stuff. And yep. 
Yeah. I barely felt it. And that was just because of, you know, the circumstances, my individual system, yeah. exactly what he was infusing the chocolate with, mm -hmm. the type of chocolate maybe even, you know, as you said, there's a difference between dark chocolate and milk chocolate and how mm -hmm. that's infused and how it reacts in your body too. So, uh, what you know, and then infused with is important. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, you know, I just, uh, I got kind of cocky based on those experiences and just kind of, you know, went for it. And mm -hmm. You didn't expect him to come out of that corner yeah. swinging, did you? No, no. But You're like, shit. <laughs> I, I said, did you did you plant these things? Did you do this to <laughs> fuck me up? He's like, no, I just tried to get better at making them. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I love that moment right there. That that moment of camaraderie, though, where you're like, I kind of fucking hate you, but I'm not mad. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, what else you got, though? <laughs> what else you got? I love and you're right, show. though. When you're talking flour and concentrates, you mm -hmm. know, um, the, the THC number, first of all, doesn't really mean anything. It's not an indicator no. of how high you're going to get. It's not an indicator of quality or anything like that. So and let me have... prove to you. Let me prove to you that I do know what I'm talking about as a chef, real quick, if you don't mind. So the body has an endocannabinoid system. If we can move past the ECS, we'll talk about terpenes. Oh, these beautiful fucking. So if people are like, oh, weed and wine, yes. Sediments, they're not really, but terpenes, yes. Flavors, yes. So the same way that you taste a tape of wine with sipping is it similar to the same way that you would do it with smoking with the the on notes the onsets the palates the flavors all of that but we're going to talk about food here specifically if you mix certain terpenes in your food you're going to change your ensemble effect that's how that works mangoes increase it a little bit you know what i'm saying pepper will bring down anxiety that's my point y'all so when you're shopping like mr lowell says and you're looking at the thc percentages you're doing the dumbest thing you could possibly ever do and we're telling you don't do that i okay. appreciate you using the word ensemble too that's that's a, a technicality ah, that everybody boy, gets. though i okay. got to I mean, you know adam would yell at my ass if i was like oh it's the entourage effect he's corrected me more than once now okay like that, that that originally came from dr grinspoon yes thank you thank you who i believe is he still with us no, he passed away no, not that's, too long yeah, ago. But. That's what I thought. I was like, shit. But at the same time, people are still carrying it on. That's, I love that. Thanks for kind of jumping in there, man. I appreciate that. But at the same time, like, that's what people don't understand. So basil has a terpene in it called estrogel, okay? Or, or I could be slaughtering that. But what I do know is a chef, and I can spell it and write it for you. If you eat too much of that, it's, it can induce vomiting. You can get really sick. However, Italians don't disagree there. But, however, if you mix that with cannabinoids, you can make a banging pesto or a banging marinara sauce. Or and that's my point. You know, well, what does that have to do with cooking? Well, okay, I'll explain it to you. Again, terpenes, endocannabinoid system, entourage effect, or excuse me, ensemble effect, formerly known as the entourage effect. You get the idea. The point is. When you eat this, I can make your high, I can manipulate how you feel just through eating food. So if I want you to have a comfortable high, which obviously is the goal, I'm going to dose it with 100 milligrams of CBD and 10 milligrams of THC the entire meal. Then I'm going to mix it with sunflower lecithin, lectin, lecithin, whatever, that bullshit. But the point is, I'm going to make it have an onset faster. So within 15 minutes, you're going to feel it. Then, if I time out how you're going to feel with the appetizers, tailing off with desserts being full of, you know, uh, CBD at first, introducing a low milligram of THC to a THC out, yeah, it's going to be banging. And it's going to look like normal food, taste like normal food. You're not going to know the difference. That's it. That's the goal of it. So once that can be infused with literally anything, which you can because you can put it into oils and fats, then you can literally do anything you want. That's the best part. You just dosing is important so i think that the point that i would like to make you know tldr if you did know what you're trying to heal and aim at that so anxiety depression what know what the symptoms are you're having properly diagnose those you know get them diagnosed whatever have you and then heal accordingly using cannabis you know right it's, it's it's no similar than that man uh what is similar though <laughs> crazy w's who what when where and why give us an idea of when this was like when you got pushed over the edge eating the chocolate tours you know candies oh. you're being a little cocky yeah um man we have to go back i'm just gonna i'm gonna guess about eight years okay 
and it was okay. third third coast was up and running and you know we yeah. had somebody there there's a kitchen in there and, yeah you know, back in the old days it was kind of nice and we also have started off with having a space for people to use their canvas once they get once they purchased it too for a while there you go and we had massages and reiki all types of stuff in there right? uh in the old days those little, little neuron memory uh popped off there for a second but that's probably uh yeah several years ago uh, I've had the exact thing that we've described, you know, yeah. uh, eat some, not get really affected, eat more, and then just go, oh, shit, you know, but uh, fortunately didn't go on to get in any trouble or do anything stupid or anything like that. So That's just, exactly uh, why we created that. the Crazy W's, yeah. because everybody's like, well, what do I do if I eat brownies that weren't meant for me? Basically, just write it out. That's really what it is. Yeah. I, uh, this guy named Steve Sharp is no longer with us. He used to be famous for making these uh, RSO bears, little chocolate bears. I had another one of those experiences too around the same time or ate one of those and then forgot about it and then i really getting nailed later on i'm going what the hell's happening what did i do <laughs> oh yeah I, I, that. That. <laughs> I did that just recently like i was uh we were walking the dogs and i'm like why am i just an i'm baked to shit right now like what's going on and I mean, I just, you know, smoked a few joints and then I thought back and said, oh, yeah, I drank that whole drink. Like, right. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. And that's 70 milligrams. I'm like, shit, the sun's better, man. <laughs> like, yeah. dogs are, it was great. I love it when that happens. But at yeah. the same time. What's scary happens. is if you don't know why it's happening. Yeah. And many people, they don't have the information first before getting into this. They really do get scared. And mm -hmm. it's unfortunate because that's a bad experience itself. But they oftentimes don't go back to it because they're so scared. And. It's something that could be very beneficial had it been approached, you know, differently. So my buddy that that, you know, took ate all the edibles, you know, ate, ate the seventy milligrams. He came back the very next day. He's like, "Hey man, you get more of those cookies?" I was like, "Yeah, I do." Here you go, 10, 20 milligrams ain't gonna hurt him. So now we know, don't hit him with seventy. You could probably take it better now, but just hit him with like ten or twenty. And it's it, it turned into this Pavlonian technique. So every time he comes to my house, he goes straight to cookies. They don't even say hi. He just walks in straight to cookies, and then he right sits on. down, and then you can kind of let it feel effect a little bit, and then he's fine. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Products work. Products work. Uh, Crazy W is who, what, when, where, and why. In a neat little bow, man, why did it happen? You just ate too much, just you expected it to be normal, and then he came out swinging, right? Yeah, I, I, I unfortunately <laughs> uh, tricked myself into believing that he wasn't going to be able to get me. You got bamboozled. My, my ego got uh, inflated, and I was like, watch this. And, uh, you know, I got I got knocked down a couple of pegs. I love so, it, man. You know, I, it's, it's, I, I get a little sense of satisfaction from hearing other people, you know, other people's like, uh, I wouldn't say sob stories, but like sob stories. You know what I mean? Like mine, it's funny. It's funny watching it happen to somebody else. It's not fun when it happens to you. You're not going to die. Never. No one's ever over. That's considered overdosing on, on cannabis. And you're just you're going to take a nap. That's it. That's it. You're going to wake up hungry and shit. But that's it. Hungry it can be scary sleep. for people. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes too. It, it's the worst thing that does happen with cannabis. And even that isn't like uh, it's not toxic, so to speak. Right. It's not. You know, it's when you say overdose, yes, you had too much, but it's not the Christ. same connotation as. Right. You're thank you. Or, or right. something like that. But. I mean, you and I say that, and then we, we know, but thank you for, yep, yep, absolutely, absolutely. When we come back, it's going to hit the final leg of the dubs. We're almost there. We're going to find out the plan W's from Mr. Lau here. Stay right tuned, or stay tuned. I'll be right back, guys. Make sure y'all pay attention to the channel 117 coming soon, coming soon. How soon? Uh, just soon. I, I, I'm not rushing it. <clears throat> just soon. But let's talk about the plan W's, the last dub of the day. We've made it through everything up to this point. Let's find out. Plan W's, Jamie, who, what, when, where, and why? Who would you smoke with, dead or alive? Dead or alive? Dead or alive. Okay. Uh, dead, I would like to smoke with Sir Isaac Newton. 
Ooh. The, the father of gravity himself. Did some really, really Apple to the amazing dome. things. Um, he did. Including creating his theory and then developing uh, 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 math to explain it. And he happened to have been in a in a, um, a pandemic scenario, actually. And he was at his estate uh, in isolation, you know, kind of similar to what we just have been through. And that's when a lot of that work went down. Mm -hmm. And uh, very, very interested in how something so, I mean, there, what, were there, I mean, oftentimes there are other people that are kind of working on this stuff. And he's like the guy that did the breakthrough or whatever. It's like, it wasn't like totally unheard of or whatever. But in this case, there's some things that are pretty magnificent and different. And uh, I'm very that curious. Stands, how stands how stands do you make this leap this as time, an individual? Yeah. You know, that's unusual. Like, I, you know, in this world, in this cannabis world, I've done a lot of stuff. But I've noticed there's not there's not a lot of uh, uh, totally ingenious ideas. The ingenious part, or the difficult part, I should say, is implementing just a good idea. Uh, sitting around talking about him, coming up with them. There's there's never been any real shortage shortage of. But uh, there's something substantial about what he did that I'm really interested in. There are many other people too, but that one comes to mind. And living, I, I always enjoy whether or not I've done it. I've done it many times. But yeah. I always enjoy smoking with. Uh, uh, our, our really old schoolers, John Sinclair, and others. You brought up Adam. Uh, there's others out there, Maruga Booker and Melody Carr and Reverend Steve Thompson and Christine Landino. And there's many people that you just get a, a better sense of the history and, and how we got here. More interesting things about what they've done in their life. And there's a new awesome story like every time. It's a whole different vibe. Yeah. It's a whole different vibe. Yeah. I feel that, man. Yo, let's talk more about Newton. You know, I feel like, I feel like, let's talk about more about Newton. So, Plan W's, who, what, when, where, and why. What would you smoke with Sir Isaac Newton? Like, bong? What would you do? Just like, hey, yo, you got a pop can? You're like, I don't have a pop can, obviously. <laughs> they were smoking yeah. shit back then, I think, weren't they? I mean, it seems, seems, seems I like it to how, me. Like, though, because they, I mean, how? That's a piece pipe, well, pipes, I would imagine. They're pipes. Yeah. You know? And uh, That's true. I wouldn't be surprised if cigarettes are being rolled or cigars being made. I guess I really don't know that whole history. I, I should know that better to try to talk about it. But, uh, you know, the, the, we've, especially hanging out with Newton, we're not going to be short oh, yeah. ideas on how to smoke pot. Man. But, I but, mean, uh, you know damn well Newton's... You know, the apple that, that fell on his head would make a great it. pipe. Right. You know? <laughs> Watch him have, like, an actual... He, like, what are you smoking out of? Like, oh, this is, a, this is a hemp stock that I grew. We're smoking the hemp that I grew. Dried out the pipe, and I did, did this, this, this chamber... This is called uh, the Newton's pipe of, well, whatever, dude. And then he yeah, hands it to you and you hit it and you're like, fuck, now I understand theoretical physics. You know what I mean? Like, shit. <laughs> That's all it takes, man. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, I don't, you know, it'd be interesting <laughs> to find out what was available for cannabis yeah. then. You know, what, what did it look like? Where did it come from? You know, we call this Kentucky Big Leaf. You fucking yeah. sure do. <laughs> I mean, I, I, there's, there's good, there's been good cannabis ever since there's been cannabis. So, I mean, like, it's not like, you know, it's just recently that people develop good cannabis. I, it wasn't around as abundantly to, you know, I, I would imagine right. there was in, in, in diverse of selections that we might have walking into a store or even, you know, dealing with a couple of good caregivers or anything like that. So, I wonder if it grew wild back then. Well, I, you know, I'm sure it you did. Know. Walking yeah. through a woods, you're like, we can smoke that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it did. But I, I wonder who started in ag. Well, it, it, it's probably one of the first crops used in organized agriculture. Right. Uh, and so, who like had like a, a garden back then that was just a small one that was at their house that was designed around take. I mean, I, I just wonder if that should happen. Of course, oh, that type of history, you know, doesn't get emphasized or talked about as much. Or as it like, gets erased. Probably. Yeah. You know. But it's probably like going that. on. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah, they're like, it doesn't fit our narrative. That never existed. Yeah. That's not fair for you to decide who gave you that power. You know what I mean? We spent a long time on just erasing yeah. parts of history that we don't like. And exactly. We, we can't do that. We need to learn from them. We just, it, it, it's, it's terrible. What's not terrible, though, who, what, when, where, and why playing W's, when would you like this to take place? So if you could smoke with you know Sir Isaac Newton tomorrow, would you do it tomorrow? Would you do it yesterday? When would you do it? Time is relative. Well, okay. Interesting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I, I think I imagine it always being in his era. Okay. Doing everything from that perspective is how okay. I imagine it. That said, it would be pretty cool to introduce somebody like him to this world. And you would think right. if you did it incrementally enough, it's got to be such a shock for anybody. 
But for somebody like him, if you did it fundamentally enough and explained like this is like an expansion of some of the, the ideas that you had, and, and uh, you know, and it seems magical, whatever, but we can show you how we get there through all the various components and technological advances and, and that type of stuff, you know. And I just think that maybe he would be uh, more appreciative than the average, like somebody you might pluck from the past. Oh, know? absolutely. I, you know, let's say that let's go back to you know the father of of of, of you know of numer you know of numerology and physics and stuff. Let's go back to the father of gravity. Let's go back to to his time. Okay. And then let's watch him plant that seed of whatever it is. So in this case, let's just say uh, gravity, you know, theoretical physics, okay, or, or, or cannabis or whatever have you. So he plants that seed, and then we montage forward to our time, and you get to see that into a huge tree. We get to watch that tear go down his eye. You guys never forgot. That's amazing. That's what you want. And I see that, 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 that flavor in the bone marrow there. Absolutely. You imagine Absolutely. showing him those, uh, those Navy video uh, uh, shots of like own flying or the what do they call it? So, Imagine showing them dubstep. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? You you just like hey, I've identified aerial phenomena AEP. Yeah. That's the official government use of what a UFO right. used to be called. So I just had to get work that out for a second. No, but right. but we no. show that to him, and that's yeah. all the theor theories based on that stuff is like somebody figured out how to deal with the gravity, you know. Otherwise, we don't have any explanation for how those things move around like that. So let's say that Sir Isaac Newton watched an Iron Man movie. You think he would freak out and be like, "Oh my God!" Thinking it's real? Because let's face it, those graphics are pretty convincing when we watch, you know, the first movies, and then you know, new yeah. Ones I, I think unless he had <laughs> enough background, enough context. I mean, right. you have to understand, uh, plucking somebody from. Can't even imagine what it would be like. I mean, Over no reference, real quick. no reference to any of this stuff at all, except for no. if you could talk to him a little bit and explain how he foundationally like came up with some of this stuff. You know, then you might be able to get him on, get him to like extrapolate up to like, I don't know if that's that's actually correct or not. It's probably not, but to be able to understand, you know, how some of these things, you know, got there and, and, and realistically, and that like just be. There's so much context though that would just. I think that if you tried to funnel it into someone's brain like they did in the Matrix by plugging those spikes, and you just blow their head up. It's it might be it might so be much. too difficult to do, and you just can't deal with it, and you go nuts, and that's it. You know, I just like to think but of all people time, though he might be one of them that could deal with it. Right, but at the same time, they are able to correct millions of neurons and things of that nature. So it's like, who who knows, man? Who knows? We 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 said hoverboards wouldn't exist. We were making fun of it back, you know, and. and in, in the 80s with theories and stuff and then boom now we have them and people are flying around downtown downtown la in jet packs and shit and damn you know just keep yeah, so incidentally the other thing i would like to do though is and i don't know who the person would be i mean there it would i wouldn't necessarily be that selective but i would like to go back to atlantis which i believe did exist yep and um and see what was going on then I'm sure they were okay, using would you cannabis go back too. As a mermaid, or would you go back as like a deep sea diver? Like, how would you do it though? Because that well, matters. well, I mean, if um, nobody knows exactly where the 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 city was, but it's been Plato describes it, mm -hmm. uh, and and in fair detail too. And there are a couple places around the world that kind of match these descriptions. One of them is this place called the Rika in in the Western Sahara, okay. and um, uh, it was not like the like the idea of Atlantis that uh, you know that it's it is underwater, but it did get affected and you know effectively shut down and knocked out by major flooding. We had a cataclysmic event where the earth where the earth got nailed by a huge meteor in the ice caps, and uh, I guess this is like uh, working science. This is a hypothesis, but more and more evidence supports this. It's kind of like what the Gilgamesh story comes from mm -hmm. it's what the uh, Noah's Ark story comes from and that like there probably was like major catastrophic flooding that took place over a period of time and even happened like abruptly if we got smacked in the ice caps by a mile long meteor or something like that there's, even, stuff, you know. there's even theories out there that Atlantis was actually uh, an alien civilization that they just ruined yeah I got it. I, I don't go with the alien thing that's <laughs> much more realistic 
that right. humans got more advanced before makes sense to me before makes we got knocked me. down by by a natural cataclysmic yeah. event like you know and then we had to kind of start again that might have even happened a couple of times and there's yeah. there's there's circumstantial evidence pointing at that i mean what actually happened i'm not going to you know exactly be able to discuss that but we what yeah. how we think of things traditionally are probably not exactly correct yeah and i mean we're limited in knowledge and that's the thing of it you know it's, it's hard to not only see ourselves from different perspectives of different people's eyes but it's, it's hard to you know know about something that there's no record of like so, there's no proof of yeah so if um if these things that we're catching on video now um are not like another country's technology or not our own technology and we're just trying to like make it seem like this right um and it's and we're trying to figure out what it is i i tend to believe it would be more of former advanced civilizations that split off that were able to go into space and all that kind of stuff that are here now against you know or uh you know more than i would believe that they were aliens or the aliens were here before i think okay. it's, just, it's just more physically possible for the advanced people plausible plausible right uh uh you know for that to be the case then for you know another intelligent being from another place in our own galaxy or somewhere else you know finding us and then coming here and fucking around with us like this for a while i just tend to believe it's, it's, it's us i'm with it you know i'm with it do i believe that there's uh you know intelligence out there yeah sure that in it theory, would seem like it would, it would uh, sense, look at right? the numbers you know exactly. yeah exactly yeah. statistically it would make sense um but the point here being is i don't believe do i believe that you know aliens have come to this planet that could have happened as well i may don't or may believe not that there is exactly statistically it makes sense you know but again do i believe that there is an ancient alien civilization no but i can't say for fact because i wasn't there i can't speak on that but right. it is good to entertain the idea however i do believe the latter of the two i do or the the, the pre the, the, no it's the, fun the, to talk about the alien yeah. thing man i mean yeah you know it, it there's is, a lot of information out there and, and uh, all the people who get into ufos if you, you know watch their interviews and stuff like that they acknowledge like the incredible amount of just nutballs that are you know say anything or yeah. whatever to grab some attention and it confuses <laughs> the issue but but you get some really credible testimony in the mix you get some shit caught on video and yeah there's yep. you know that could be other countries technology that could be our own technology um but there's something there that's pretty now tangible that you know hasn't been around as much and everybody has to somehow go what the hell is that thing you know what's going on right. there we're gonna figure that out so it's really unique times man it's, exactly it's you know, imagine what they thought way back in the day when they were building the first ever stealth bomber you know what i mean where it can change the outside you know it looks like it's flying glass that's gonna look like your ufo because you can't stealth out blinking lights you know what i mean that's my point so you're gonna see a, a, a multi you know what i'm saying yeah if my question is how come stealth bombers or or you know or let's say other secret testing how how about they just admit that just like uh you know whatever and then area 51 and all of that horror shit. but what really matters they do say that about area 51 now years yeah. later those were weather balloons yeah. uh, we were trying exactly. to do this or that or whatever but back then they didn't yeah they didn't, they didn't. well actually i mean if you, i don't want to be conspiratorial here if you do some of the research originally they were like hey we found some aliens and then that was all redacted and you know yep. like the next day and then we turned into the weather balloon thing yep <laughs> yep <laughs> And so it's kind of funny that you should mention that because it's very similar with cannabis. A lot of the stuff was like, hey, this, 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 and this. And you see videos from back then and this and that and the other. And you're like, well, where has this shit been for the last 60 years? You know? So yeah. a lot of questionable content. People are altering the narrative to fit their own personal narrative. It's not fair to us. But what is fair to us is the plan W is going back to the father of gravity here. Who, what, when, where, and why. Everyone knows a place, man. You're going to smoke. With Sir Isaac Newton, where are you going to take him? You're in his time. Where are you going to go? Well, I'm staying right on his estate. Ooh. Chilling Ooh. out with him right there, how he lives, what he does, what he, what his sources of information are, what's inspiring and what's Just motivating. Just throw apples out of his head. No. No, we'll make some pipes out of those apples. <laughs> there you go. Smoke some pot and discuss uh, these things. Or get an yeah, idea yeah. from where this came from, man. That's really what I want to observe. Yeah. It's Just like, what is it that between the individual i'm sure he's a special like person yeah. uniquely insightful and smart and you know that type of thing but 
Where's that? Where's that information? What was that inspiration, man? What, 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 I mean, the, the apple falling on the head is the story, but the, that's not the okay. whole story. You know, right, so. right, right. But that's that's what sparked the idea. You know, yeah. that's the one reference point that most people know about right. that. Uh, they don't understand, you know, um, any of the uh, quadrilatic titrations that 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 he wrote down and why they're of importance. People don't get that, and people don't like overcomplicated shit. I do. <laughs> it's fascinating as shit. I'm sure we'll have a conversation about it sometime in person or sometime soon. Uh, I think that it would be amazing if, like, y'all were just kind of chilling on his estate under an apple tree or some shit, or he whips out an apple, then he, sh he pulls out, like, this, like, little pocket knife thing. And he's like, check this out. And all he does is, like, this one swift motion, and he makes a bowl out of an apple and throws it away. He's like, all right, cool, packs it, and then boom. You're like, holy shit, this guy's going to, like, Yes. I have a better Fire idea where he's coming him. from. I'm like, Just okay, here we boom, go. Boom. Done. So they didn't have uses for, for having pipes and bowls and shit back then. You, just, you, you core this apple, hit it with this thing, and then boom, you got to smoke it and pitch it. Or eat the damn thing. You know, who knows? And then he, next thing you know, you got, you know, Isaac Newton standing in front of you, eyes right, right in the devil's dick, just going, yo, you ever thought about, like, gravity and shit? Boom. Conversation. <laughs> I hope he doesn't speak, you know, instead of <laughs> But, you know, you get my point. Hey, as long as you understand what he says, man, there's, <laughs> exactly. there's obviously a lot He's behind so, that. I, I can't understand this, Ginger. Yeah. You guys call gingers, huh? That's steak? Great. Fucking great. And I'll just walk away. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. But plan W is who, what, when, where, and why. Yo, this is the period at the end of the sentence. This is, this is that huge presidential bow on the end package of the planned dubs, why would you smoke with Sir Isaac Newton? You're talking about going all the way back. You got it all the way planned. At the end of the day, why would you smoke with Sir Isaac Newton? Well, there are many, many interesting people I'd like to know more about, but uh, what he did to, from my humble perspective, just kind of having a layman's interest in, you know, science and physics and uh, uh, unique theories of, of existence and nature and you know and that kind of stuff um he's he's done things unique enough that i would just i'm just really really interested as to why or how these ideas came to be and why he was so motivated to pursue them and uh, specifically for him and, and his life and his situation uh, it seems so like natural and obviously part of everything now and our but but things have to start somehow you know and right like how did that go down? Were there other people working on this? And he just like didn't break through. That happens sometimes, but there's not a. I don't think there's a whole lot of history of that, a record of that. But you know, again, I'm not an, I'm not a historian. Uh, I right. know that he, when he asked to explain it, created an, you know an entire type of mathematics in order to like, oh, here's what you know, here's here's what I meant, you know, that He's type of like, stuff. Here's how I'm proving it. All right, listen to this yeah. shit. Instead of that, we're gonna use numbers. They're like, wait, what are numbers? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, wait, what? I get it. I get it. We can, we can, we can definitely appreciate the metric system to Sir Isaac. There's something major there that took place, and I would just like to know what it is. That that could be said for many points and times and things that were discovered and then we moved on from and and that type of stuff. That is a particularly interesting one for me, though. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Well. We finished the five dubs, bro. We got through it. Let's <laughs> do a real quick uh, commercial break and come back with the 30-second philosophy so you guys stick around. Last segment of the show, the 30 second philosophy is Jamie. I can't appreciate you enough for coming on the show, man. It sounds like when you and I have a conversation, I'm gonna have to roll more than one joint. <laughs> right on. I'm definitely, I'm, definitely. I'm ready for one pretty soon myself. Well, let's get to it. Let's get to it. I found Marx historical materialism. This should be interesting. Okay. 
The foundation premise of Karl Marx's historical materialism is that the form, <clears throat> sorry, form that society takes is determined in the way in which production is organized. Dry mouth is real, fam. This has meant a fundamental division between those who own and control means of production, factories, machineries, tools, and the like, and those who do not. Marx claimed that the conflict between the haves and the have-nots has been the motor of history. The most advanced mode of organizing production is capitalism. It is characterized by the existence of two great classes, the bourgeois and the owners of the means of production and the proletariat, who only control their own labor power. The proletariat are forced to sell their labor to the bourgeois in order to survive. They, ex <clears throat> they expend their product productive energy for the benefit of the class that exploits them. The dynamic renders capitalism unstable. The proletariat are fully aware in reality of the situation and can rise up and overthrow the existing system. Marx argued that it is inevitable that capitalism will eventually collapse under the weight of its own contradictions. The historical destiny of the proletariat is to, <clears throat> is to institute to form a new form of society, communism, based on the collective ownership. In doing so, they will end the alienation of the proletariat f for the labor process itself and from the essential, uh, the essential of humanity. So, pretty apropos. That's my point. So look at what Karl Marx, years, fucking years ago, predicted would happen today. Well, we knew about human greed back then. <laughs> and, and unless everybody plays by a fair uh, set of rules for capitalism, it doesn't work. We no. demonstrate it here and now all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And that's my point. What the rich don't understand that is that if you pay the poor more, you get richer. That's how that works. That's that's how that works because the, that that's no how one person needs to have a billion dollars. <laughs> that's to be floating no. around and being distributed no. and used for people's quality of life, other than themselves just, or their next twelve generations right. or whatever. That's you know. It should be to the point if you make up to a billion, you want it life. You can't make any more. That you're done. Just fuck off. Like go go live in an island or something. But the point is, like, yes. Capitalism sucks. Uh greed is alive and well. We're seeing it today, especially in cannabis. It's unfortunate, but we're seeing it. We're dealing with it. We're trying to give people a voice. We're trying to educate a person. Again, Jamie, I can't thank you enough. You guys definitely go check out uh, Jazz Cabbage Cafe. When can they catch you and where should they look for it? The uh, show broadcasts live Tuesdays, 4 o'clock Eastern time until usually about 6 o'clock. And uh, it's broadcast live initially on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And is then on something like 20 platforms thereafter as oh. archived. Uh, all the major podcast things in audio and in audio video, depending on. I love it, man. Love you can it. ask Alexa for it, I think, if, you're, if you have that. Yeah. That'd be badass. I'm going to try the Google Home and I'll let you know how it works. I'll let you know how it works. But right I, I can't pray, shoot, appreciate you enough, man. You and Rick are out, out there killing it. A huge inspiration to the show here. If you guys need anything, just let us know, man. Uh, this has been another Daily Chronicles episode. My tokers, jokers, and smokers. I'm Chef Rodney. We will catch you guys on the flip. Appreciate it. So if you're happy and you know what, clap your hands. Thank you. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hi, baby. Hey. How are you today? Good. What are you up to? Do you still want to hang out with your favorite and only girlfriend? Of course I want to hang out today. I'm just playing some video games and smoking some weed. Ugh, wait. Do you want to tell her you're playing video games? 
I mean, honesty is key in a relationship, but usually when you're honest with her, she bites a chunk out of your ass bigger than the fucking Mechlodon would. <sighs> hey, baby. I'm deaf down to hang out. We can... Wait. Didn't I already say hey? <sighs> hay is for horses as to mud is for... Uh, fuck, I'm high! Mendes has some good shit lately. <laughs> I just... I gotta be honest. Just. Be. Honest. What are you doing? I texted three minutes ago. I expect an answer by now. Shit. She's on to me. Okay. Make sure you have perfect punctuation so she can't tell you're on the weed. Ah, fuck it. How's this? Yes. We will hang out. I will be over in an hour to pick you up in my minivan. I am not playing video games and I'm deaf not smoking any. Ah, see? There you go. There you go. More white lies to tell her. Hey eh, there, Tommy. You should like, you sound like a fucking robot too, dude. Like, just text her, yes, we're hanging out. But not in the question form. Okay. It's been seven whole minutes, babe. I now know you're a cheater. I know you could be in the shower, making a sandwich, or doing something logical right now. But my brain and my past just hooked up, and they tell me all oh, boyfriends cheat. WTF, I'm not cheating at anything. Not at this game, and not on you. I'm just trying to tell you what I'm doing open and honestly, with good punctuation, so you know I'm not playing video games, smoking weed, thinking about watching porn, playing video games alone. Wait, does that sound like I'm hanging out with someone? Ah, oh, fuck. It's like over, Tommy. I want your shit out of my apartment today. Does this look familiar? Don't mind the 900 number. It's not really real. Just to make it look like there's an infomercial and uh, I'm dressed nice, got my hair slicked back and all that stuff, and blah blah, you know. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, your significant other, they, they're not going to text lightning fast. You're not going to get a 1.2 second response time from them. Your partner's probably doing something logical, like, I don't know, making a sandwich or probably trying to type out the most perfect sentences and punctuation so you don't take your little hot rod of mental abuse and shove it up their ass for doing things that they enjoy doing but you love to get up their hole about. Like smoke weed, you know, play video games, watch a live execution, whatever your significant other is into outside of you. You know, just let them fucking do it. You know, I think your partner doesn't always want to hear about your boring ass problems all the time that you should have had a hold of years ago. Like, They've been cheering you on, they've been in your corner, they're always rooting for you, and you're just never listening. We don't need anyone to dictate our lives but ourselves. That's up to the individual. Relationships are made for dictators. Stop being a dictator today, start being patient for your texts also today, as well. I don't know. Oh, I don't really have a. Fake. They broke something. Oh. Oh, they broke something. Oh, God. Dude, thank you for giving me the time of your day by watching my video. If that makes any sense. If you did like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and then subscribe for more absurd, crusty comedy content. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, what are you waiting for? Go to the videos, check them out. You should have pressed the skip button by now. Why aren't you pressing skip yet? You should be. Welcome to the Krusty Comedy Club. Coming to DVD. <laughs> no, wait. Coming to VHS. It's it's the best of the Krusty Comedy Club, featuring Steve Pigat, former talk show. I'm a uh, former... What was I in? Oh, talk show host, Steve Piggott. Thank you. <laughs> Marv Johnston. Oh, Marvel. <laughs> Slick Sally. I never knew what a handy or a blowy was until I was about 12 years old. I thought a handy was a round of applause. And I thought a blowy was the last name of a guy named David. <laughs> then I asked the janitor at the school and he told me there was job at the end of those. And I was like, ooh, goody, a handy job, a blowy job. 
those sound easy, like minimum wage jobs. I'm going to be rich. No, it's uh, copping to make money and blowing air to make money. Minimum wage, it's going to be great. But then when I found out what a hand job and a blow job actually were, behind the school with the great science teacher, I came home as fast as I could, and I told my parents that those were the only jobs I ever wanted. <laughs> I'm Slick Sally, and my accent sucks. <laughs> oh, oh, Flinner. Kids, stay off from that. <laughs> Drinking your hair on. <laughs> and other people, and maybe some cats. What are you having sex with a girl, and then she dies the moment that you come in her? Is that considered necrophilia? Like, I've always wondered that because I went to my corner and I'm like, hey, my girlfriend just died when I had sex with her. The Krusty Comedy Kitty. <laughs> Hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of VHS footage. What's the difference between a girlfriend and a wife? About 90 pounds. <laughs> oh. Everyone's seen your wife. Hey! <laughs> Seriously, she's as a fucking bust. Do you need to put the four ways on me, fucker? Like, what's going on with that? Get off the stage. What? Steve Control my rage. Off the stage. Oh, get off the stage. Well, I've got about 15 more minutes. Fucking jackass. Yeah. You fuck that right. boy. We got that comedy crust for that comedy pizza. Call today and laugh about how jam this tape will get in the DVR for eight payments of tour. Yeah, the price. Any girls want to flash with their titties? Idiot. You got 20 minutes. 20, 20 minutes. minutes. 20 sweet minutes. 20, 20, 20 sweet, sweet minutes. minutes. <laughs> so what are you going to do with your 20 minutes? I'm going to become a doctor. <laughs> Clear. Me? I'm going to take up smoking. <laughs> I'm gonna be getting another problem causing addiction that's gonna send my family into a downward spiral like three years ago. We'll start with diabetes. Oh, me? <laughs> I'm gonna wish for 20 more minutes. 20 sweet more minutes. Because you never know when the next heart attack's gonna come. No. Burger eating slut. What are you gonna do with your 20 minutes? 20 sweet more minutes you get to just be. Probably sweet fuck all. Cause that's how your day is always going. You never get up and do anything, do you? I wonder what your life is like scrolling on the internet, hand on gland, waiting to troll some innocent person who just wants to show what her fucking dinner looks like on the internet. You're a complete fucking asshole. You know that, right? You're fucking pathetic. You sicken me. And it's time you found way fucking more than 20 minutes to get your fucking shit together. You fucking pile of shit. We're watching you watching us. Thanks for my 20 sweet minutes. 20 more puffs closer to the epitaph. <laughs> Look, disclaimer. 20 minutes isn't really guaranteed. It, it comes sold separately, as they'd say on TV. Like, we're n we never know if we have 20 more minutes. Because, you know, cars are known to hit people. Horse and buggies come flying out of nowhere, you know, and they hit people and they explode on impact. Yeah, it, it's all on the internet or in your head or whatever, you know, reality. <laughs> so, you know, enjoy your 20 sweet minutes if you have them, and we'll see you next time. Like the video if you liked it. I really appreciate you getting this far, watching the whole thing, watching what's on plot with mine at this point, or however long it took to edit this. It does take time, and it does get real, real fun. So yeah, subscribe, like, comment, 
because I like to hear your opinion, whether it's shitty or not, because it's an opinion and you're allowed to have one. 